last lecture I was discussing on a case study on the MEMS sensor that is MEMS capacitive accelerometer. Some specification we define and from there how these specifications are achieved we discussed on that two methods we followed one is analytical treatment and the other is the simulation using standard simulation tools and we compared the results. I remember I also discussed the various structures of the capacitive accelerometers which are bridge type, some are the cantilever flexor types. So, out of that we found a particular structure which is double cantilever beam structure is quite sensitive and without much difficulty of technology and with that we achieved our goal by certain simulation certain parameter variation and after satisfying those parameters our next step will be how to go ahead for fabrication of those devices. And basically these structures are three contain three pieces and how the three individual pieces are fabricated and then how they are assemble that I will discuss today. The design specifications which I mentioned in my last lecture are range 10 minus plus minus 10 g, over range 30 g, damping ratio 0 0.7 to 1.2, natural frequency 100 hertz, nonlinearity plus minus 1 percent of full scale, resolution 0 0.02 g, threshold is 0 0.01 g operating temperature range minus 85 to plus 40 degree centigrade. So, with that we confine to this structure which is shown here three pieces. Middle piece is basically the sensor and the top and bottoms are two fixed electrodes which form parallel plate capacitance with the central piece and the central piece is comprising of a proof mass which can move freely between the electrodes and accordingly the capacitance between top fixed place in middle, middle uh, the sensing electrode and that with the bottom fixed electrode will vary and we are going to measure the differential change of capacitance of this particular structure. And as we used a proof mass and that proof mass will displace according to the acceleration and as a result of which the gap between the capa uh, uh, the gap between two plates will change and capacitance variation will be detected and which is a measure of the acceleration. That was the basic principle which I discussed in my last lecture. Now, here the whole uh, thing whole sensing element is the middle middle sensing middle piece of silicon and that is two cantilever beam structure which we will confine onto that one is here another is here and this middle one is a proof mass and this structure is to be fabricated using micro machining technology and before that using using some standard the process simulator which is intellisuit software which is micro machining if you do it and it will show you the the uh, after micro machining how the shape looks like. So, there how much will be the, the undercut, how much will be the, the corner compensation that we can get some idea which are not 100 percent practical figure after getting etched, but some idea we can have from these simulated tools how it looks like after certain process. So, we are going to have similar structure which is shown in the figure. Now, here one thing is uh, different from earlier flexor or cantilevers which I stressed in my last lecture also that is we found that this thing this kind of structure is much more sensitive if you make the flexor at the middle middle of the thickness of the proof mass. You remember it is not the flexure is not at the top surface is just at the middle 
of middle around the thickness of the vertical direction of the probe mass. There we found the, the sensitivity will improve drastically and uh, there uh, the, uh, the performance will be also improved. So, now the question is how to get the flexure or cantilever at the middle of the vertical dimension of that means, middle of the thickness of the probe mass. So, that is one difference which is difference from the piezo resistive the accelerometer which I discussed in uh, two three uh, 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 lectures back. So, there the our problem was that we fabricated the piezo resistance at the surface of the silicon because the sensing element where in that case is a resistance cell which has to be at the surface uh, because the stress was maximum at the surface. But in this particular case we are not going to fabricate the piezo resistances rather here sensing mechanism is capacitance variation. So, the flexure you have to design such that the displacement of the, the plate will be maximum plate means here the proof mass, proof mass has got certain area and that proof mass displacement with acceleration from the top and bottom fixed electrode should be as maximum as possible. Since there is no active element or sorry passive elements we are not going to fabricate on the structure that is either resistance or some other may be active device we are not going to fabricate. So, there the problem does not arise if we make the flexure just at the center of the thickness of the probe mass. So, here our main objective is the displacement maximum displacement how can you get it that we have found if you make it at the center the simulation results also tells us that then it will displacement is more as a result of which obviously, the capacitance change will be more. So, that how can we get it? So, that little bit I discussed again I am telling you. So, we will go for the preferential etching technique which is the anisotropic crystallographic plane dependent anisotropic etching and we are going to use here KOH which is the standard silicon etchant. So, there we know the etch rate of silicon in different crystallography directions are different 1 0 0 1 1 1 and 3 1 1 the three planes are involved in this particular structure. So, here we have seen the H rate of 3 1 1 plane is 1.71 times the H rate of 1 1 1 plane for K H concentration of 40 weight percent at a temperature in of 40 degree C to 60 degree C. So, that is the normal temperature we are going to use. Now, since there is a preferential etching between 3 1 1 2 1 1 1. So, which are involved in making the structure in the central plane because you see uh, you, you can see here there are different surfaces one is the slant surface one is the vertical surface which is 1 0 0 and another you are getting some surface like this here. So, this three surfaces we need the etch rate should be in certain direction should be maximum in other directions will be some uh, some variation will be there. So, that we want etching in a 3 1 1 plane after some time not in 1 1 1 plane. So, that is achieved in KU silicon some differential is there and the inclination angle in 3 1 1 with 1 0 0 is 25.24 degree. So, that is the thing. So, initially what you can do here, so you can have some oxide masking at the flexure then go for etching. So, after certain amount of etching is done then you can remove the oxide and just simply you dip the whole thing into the KOH etching solution. So, it will follow the preferential crystallographic dependent etching and you can get the structure. That means, you can say in that direction it is a maskless etching some kind of the maskless etching is also also relevant in this particular fabrication step. So, that is normally followed. 
Initial etching with oxide mask over beam is carried out and subsequent etching is done without any oxide mask. Width of the beam in the mask is kept more due to recession during maskless etching. Recession means it is side all also little bit it will attract. So, that is why the mask level the size or width of the basically flexure beam is kept little bit more compared to the actual width. So, now let us see how the process will follow, what will be the actual process to get the structure which I have shown in the in, in, at the beginning in the second slide I, I believe. Now, this thing is uh, the fabrication steps initially let us concentrate on the middle piece which is the sensing piece how we can get it. So, we have to start with the silicon wafer that is 575 microns 520 uh, 500 plus minus some variation is there. So, which wafer we have simulated that is 5 25 to 75 micron thick n type 100 that is a wafer. Now, if I see the color of the silicon is this. So, then uh, the uh, this is the silicon wafer where silicon is a cross section diagram I am showing. Now, next what will you do? We are going for oxide growth marks masking oxide growth that is 0.5 to 0.7 micron oxide we have to grow on the both side of the silicon and it looks like this. So, is a top the greenish color and the bottom greenish color are the oxide. So, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 micron thick oxide is grown at the beginning. Now, in the next is what is the next step? The oxide thinning lithography that is the mask 1. Oxide thinning lithography means we are not going to remove the oxide or not we are going to opening window in the oxide. So, that is oxide thinning lithography using the mask 1. So, this is the mask is shown at the bottom. So, this portion some window like structure is there. So, lithography this is this color is photoresist. Okay. So, here this portion is here is a white portion in the mask. So, automatically here there is no photoresist, no photoresist here and at the same time you can see here on slit type of thing is there. So, this particular portion we have intentionally done here because you see we want when the middle piece will go up or go down in that case. So, sticking problem is to be avoided. That is I I mentioned sometimes back if you remember in surface micro machining there is a problem is surface stiction that is any kind of the membrane or or the cantilever during the movement maximum movement it can stick either in the top or bottom surface and there it get it fixed. Now, in order to avoid here also if you see over range protection kind of thing if the complete proof mass, the whole proof mass with a jerk, it goes down drastically. So, it should not the touch the bottom electrode, because you see the parallel plate capacitor, top is the electrode and bottom electrode that makes short circuit. So, it should not be there. So, for that in the proof mass, we can make certain uh, narrow, narrow uh, uh, over small region narrow hill type of thing, some protrude structure which will stuck there and that it may prevent breaking of the flexure also as well as that if that protrude is not uh, the metallized. So, then automatically that short circuit between the, uh, the middle plane and the bottom plane or either top plane will not be there. So, for that we are in the in all the mask we have some made some slit kind of thing here and accordingly there we will deposit something or we will make certain structure which will not disturb the proof mass or stuck with the either top or bottom. Okay. Now, next is uh, the oxide etching in RIE and this is uh, the thinning I told you the thinning layer thinning kind of thing oxide masking. 
So, H to leave 1000 angstrom only. So, here only 1000 angstrom will be there and initially I, uh, I think it was nearly uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 micron we took it. So, out of that rest of the portion is etched only this portion is left in this region. Now, this strip the photoresist. So, this color is removed that means, photoresist has been removed if it is a positive easily you can remove it by acetone warm acetone or if it is a negative resist then you can go for the 1 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 boiling or you can use the photoresist remover at which is used at a little bit higher temperature more than room temperature maybe 70 degree or 80 degree C. Okay. So, you remove the, the strip and then means photoresist you strip the resist then you will get the structure like that. So, here oxide thickness is less here oxide thickness is more. Next step is so, here now we go for deposition of silicon nitride on both side of thickness 0 0.5 micrometer. So, this is silicon the, the, the green color is silicon dioxide here we have thinned down. Now, silicon nitride which is bluish color on the top and bottom in a both places we have to get silicon nitride and that you can only get by deposition technique and that deposition technique may be either your CVD or you can go for sputter deposition. So, you deposit nitride top and bottom both sides. Next is nitride lithography for frame because the middle structure if you remember two flexures are there proof mass is there at the middle and surrounding there is a frame. So, now we have to define the frame and for that we need a lithography and that lithography is shown here and mask 2 is also shown at the bottom. So, that means here we normally we quote photoresist then using, using this mask then we get removed the photoresist from top and bottom certain portion. Okay. So, there after that we are going to uh, etch nitride and we will further process it and the frame will be defined this portion and this portion this region and this region will be from frame and here in the you can see in the left side some structure is we are going to create that is basically uh, in, in, in at the end you will find that is done only for taking contact. Now, in this kind of structure where three pieces are used one bottom top electrode fixed sorry bottom electrode fixed top electrode fixed and the middle. So, you have to take contact parallel plate capacitance means the top electrode in the bottom side will be one plate and middle electrode you have to take contact and the bottom electrode top surface of that plane you have to take a contact. So, taking contact from those pieces in case of capacitive accelerometer is not so simple. So, that we will see how <laughs> those contacts are taken. Okay. So, at the end of the this process technology steps I will just explain how it is being done. So, now this nitride lithography uh, in this particular step and we can go for the nitride etching. So, in the last slide it was just lithography pattern then nitride the blue color has been etched you see from top and from bottom also blue color thing has been etched. Now, after photoresist removal stripping the photoresist. So, this uh, the photoresist is removed this color is not there. So, only here uh, the blue color nitride is also gone. So, the wafer looks like that only oxide is there. Now, keeping nitride as a masking material we can remove the oxide and then subsequently we we'll go for etching of silicon. So, since nitride now you will act as a masking layer for removing the oxide. Now, the next is the top view of the mask looks like that is also shown because you can see here in the slit is always maintaining this is uh, other pictures are cross sectional view this is a top view how 
mask looks like this. Now, the oxide patterning for flexure. So, this is the mask 4 here and uh, I have to pattern oxide for the flexure, flexure is here. So, since it is a cross section you can see only this color in these two region top and bottom and top view uh, with photo is, is not seen that picture will clear how it looked like at the top surface. We are taking in one of the flexure side the cross section. Okay. Now, uh, you see here we have not started uh, removing this uh, oxide and etching, maybe in the next step we will go for that oxide etching. Now, in the next step is the oxide etching in RIE now. Now, after the flexure definition, then we can go for oxide etching. The flexure has been covered here, the oxide is removed here by RIE technique and then you strip the photoresist. So, here photoresist has been removed and oxide is covering here and here is bare silicon. Here in this particular step RIE oxide removing because oxide etching you can see the photoresist is covered that is normal etch, oxide etching is buffer hydrofluoric acid. Okay. But here uh, the buffer hydrofluoric acid basically uh, it takes uh, in the lateral side also it is an isotropic HN. So, if I need the, the anisotropy then we have to go for the, the plasma etching or reactive ion etching that is anisotropy is the more anisotropic structure you can get it and there even oxide will not be oxide will be protected it can act as a masking layer also there. So, the oxide in this portion is removed as well as this hole also here it is also you see can oxide has been removed. So, nitride covered there is nitride covered here in the photoresist. Now, after removing the oxide the photoresist is stripped. If you strip the photoresist then it looks like this. Here is a direct silicon this portion direct silicon and from the bottom also this place direct silicon. The three places direct silicon is available. Now, the lift of chromium gold layer 200 angstrom. So, now still we have not started etching silicon. So, we are going to protect some portion of the silicon by chromium gold also. Now, you see here the golden color is chromium gold. So, here the mask is here shown like then using the loop top technique we deposited gold in selective places you can see which is also shown in Eolis color this portion and this portion here here and in the left side also uh, above the nitride above the silicon and here also in bottom side also just above nitride it is also deposited. So, that is the chromium gold the chromium purpose you know is for good addition of the gold film with either nitride or oxide or silicon chromium is used and very thin layer may be say 300 to 500 angstrom unit and then you can have gold layer of 2000 angstrom. Then using the mask number 6 you can go for the lift up patterning. Now, the top view of the structure looks like this. We have taken some cross section view in earlier diagram. So, if you see on the top with oxide, nitride and chromium gold the structure looks like that. So, the golden color is a yellowish color is gold and the bluish color is nitride the bluish color is what? A bluish color is uh, yeah nitride and greenish color is oxide, here is oxide, oxide and the bare thing is the silicon. So, which you saw here in the cross section structure, if you see from the top then it looks like that. So, now if you go for etching then only this portion it will be etched and in the central place you can see is basically proof mask. And I have shown you in some of the mask this strip, this is a strip 
blue, blue, bluish color strip is here, which will uh, protect the probe mass against damage. Okay. And this is the top view after that step. Now, we go for KOH etching. So, for KOH etching, again I am coming to cross sectional diagram. So, 22 micron KOH has been etched from this portion and this portion. It is not top view cross section that is why I am showing only this portion. Now, you can see here the passivation has been made in some of the region by chromium gold, some of the region by the oxide here. Okay. And accordingly, you are getting at the surface different steps. So, that means from here height is different, from there again this place is only chromium gold, from here again 22 micron delineation is there from top and bottom, and then here also uh, it, is, uh, it is just covered with chromium gold because you stop etching in this portion also. Now, in the next step is a buffer hydrophoric dip to remove flexure oxide, because you can you can see uh, in a, here as a, this top, yeah, this is the flexure oxide in this portion. Now, initially keeping that you, you went for the etching, then at the at the at the end you are going for a removal of the flexure oxide, then it will be maskless etching in that part that I mentioned at the beginning. So, that means, now buffer hydrophobic dip to remove the flexure oxide. So, flexure oxide here and here it is removed, but here it is protected by gold, bottom also protected by gold and here automatically silicon is there. So, now you can see now you are getting the surface of the silicon, sub portion silicon thickness is less in this portion here and in some portion the silicon thickness is more. So, you can somewhere if you etch from top and bottom it will make a thorough hole in somewhere you will get the flexure. Now, next is bulk KOH etch and release of the structure. So, because here you bulk etching now starting initially I just removed some portion because you, you have seen that some portion it has to be thorough hole. So, that total proof mass will be hanging uh, supporting with the flexures and in flexure also from top and bottom it will it will etch and at the middle it will stop somewhere. So, that is why the bulk etching has been done now and with that bulk etching the cross section diagram looks like that. Here you can see the because in this portion initially we have removed 22 micron that means this 22 micron thickness will be left here. So, now it is KOH, it is etching from top and bottom, here top and bottom thorough etching will be there, but since here earlier we have made 22 micron more, so automatically in this portion you will get 22 micron thickness of the flexure. So, this is the proof mass is also protected and there you can see is a here little bit uh, the strip kind of thing which we made in the mask, there are some uh, deposition of nitride will be there which is basically. Uh, insulated and if it touches in the top and bottom, so it will not short circuit the thing. So, it is stuck in that particular deposited uh, you can say the crest. Okay. Uh, 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 height is more here compared to this, this place. So, now this is the uh, structure after that you can go for next step is the top electrode. So, middle is is already been fabricated, now we go for the top electrode. How the top electrode again we start from silicon wafer which is 575 micron thick and uh, bare wafer then we go for uh, nitride deposition. You can see here the contrast over the blue is not clearly seen it seems. So, it is a some brownish color is deposited on the top and bottom. So, that is silicon nitride. We, we did not go for silicon dioxide, but here the both top and bottom silicon nitride is deposited. Now, that is of 0.5 micrometer over 500 angstrom base oxide. So, always when on bare silicon if we deposit some nitride, we have to be cautious. 
first some base or pad oxide is formed, then we deposit silicon. There is certain reason because if you directly deposit silicon nitride on bare silicon, then the a white ribbon effect will take place. So, that the nitride stain on the surface lateron, if you want to remove those nitride to get the bare silicon, you will not get it. So, that is the problem and not only the interface of the silicon and nitride will be damaged in order to prevent the silicon underneath the dielectric intact. So, initially some packed oxide of thickness of say uh, 200 angstrom or maybe up to 500 angstrom it is, it is grown from silicon then you deposit nitride. Whenever if you want to make uh, the complete removal of the passivating layer of nitride you first age nitride then this 500 angstrom or 200 angstrom oxide also can be removed easily. So, that is a preventive layer between silicon nitride and silicon is made to protect silicon intact below the dielectric film. Okay. So, now that is why a, a, a base oxide or pad oxide of 500 angstrom on top 0.5 micron silicon nitride is deposited. So, next step is nitride mask for gap formation front side. From the front side nitride is masked, back side we have protected and for masking just we went for some lithography and then uh, the windows are open from this portion and this portion and in the next step the mask looks like here is shown here is a big rectangle at the middle and in this side is a complete square structure this is the, the whole uh, area of a particular capacitive accelerometer. So, after nitride masking the wafer looks like this is a mask number 8 uh, wafer looks like this then is nitride H that is from uh, this portion and in the in the extreme right portion nitride has been etched and so the structure looks like this. Next is after the, can you see their nitride contrast color uh, it is very difficult it is a blue on top of the brown. So, it is almost mixed color I should have changed uh. anyway. So, the, uh, the nitride uh, from the top uh, because this portion is the photoresist you can see from there nitride has been removed removed and uh, then you can go for the stripping of photoresist. So, the photoresist has been removed from this point and this point and you are getting windows in the nitride in this region and then you have to go for the next is nitride mask backside for street formation mask number 9. Here also uh, to after you after uh, patterning the front side of the top electrode now back side lithography is being made. So, that here some portion is to be removed and then mask of this particular mask number 9 looks like that this is a mask number 9. So, in this portion photo is not there. So, nitride easily you can etch. Okay. So, now uh, then because uh, the in the next step if you if you remove the nitride. So, you can go for the silicon etching from top and bottom. So, here if top and bottom means is thorough you can complete remove it and here some delineation will be there. So, from top electrode which will be another fixed electrode and then you can see how it looks like in the next slide. So, now here also the the oxide is uh, sorry nitride is removed and nitride H then strip resist. So, resist is removed from their bottom. So, then you are getting the structure which looks like this. Okay. So, uh, in let me three places if you see the bottom wafer from the top only certain portion the oxide can be removed sorry silicon can be etched and in the extreme right portion 
either from the top and the, from the bottom both side it will edge. So, it will be complete removed. So, so that you can get uh, uh, opening for your contact formation. Now, next is the KOH edge front side with back side protection. It looks like that. So, you protect back side and front side you go for KOH etching. So, it opening is from this side and the, this portion and this portion. So, you etch here and here then go for the KOH H back side with front side protection. So, initially KOH H front side with back side protection and then next is KOH H back side with front side protection. So, ultimately the structure looks like this. Okay. So, with that next step is your uh, deposition of the nitride after your uh, the KOH has been etched completely you remove nitride. Okay. So, because purpose of nitride is over if you remove KOH. Now, then you deposit the chromium gold by evaporation that we call is a global, global means the full uh, surface we are not going to pattern. So, that means this is a top electrode. Now, when you are going to assemble we invert it by inverting we will place it and then we bond it. So, the top electrode formation is over. So, now we will go for the bottom electrode. This is the fabrication steps of bottom electrode of the capacitive accelerometer. Initially we fabricate the middle one which is the important sensing, then we make the top one, now we go for the bottom one. So, bottom one is relatively easy compared to the top because in the top electrode you have seen in the some edge has been completely removed and that removal is necessary in order to have contact from the middle piece, middle sensing piece. Okay, but in bottom electrode contact can be taken from the wafer itself if it is a conducting wafer. So, there you do not have to etch completely one side at the bottom electrode. You will understand if I show you the structure. Here again the bottom wafer silicon 575 micron silicon wafer is taken, then nitride deposition of uh, 0.5 micron over 500 angstrom base oxide in the same step like the previous one. Then we will go for the nitride mask for gap formation from the front side like here, then we go for nitride H. So, if you etch nitride from this portion and this portion it has been etched. So, this is protected. Now, in the next step you will get photoresis removed and the nitride looks like that. KOH H front side with back side protection. So, it is in earlier case you uh, uh, in, uh, in the top electrode from bottom also pattern and you you etch little bit, but now in the in the bottom wafer bottom electrode we etch only the front KOH etch uh, and back side is completely protect, protected by silicon nitride. Okay. So, now with that uh, uh, next is nitride etch front and back when the silicon is etched I mean the groove is uh, formed then purpose of nitride is over. So, you will remove nitride from front and bottom also and then again chromium gold evaporation global. So, you deposit chrome gold on the top of this uh, bottom electrode. This is basically the metal plate because in parallel plate capacitance electrode plates has to be formed that is the bottom electrode the electrode plate is here. So, in the next phase we are going to assemble the structure. How can you do it? So, now you can see what are the three pieces one by one all the three wafers were brought together. These are the three pieces. So, you have seen the bottom wafer this portion was not removed in the top wafer it is removed and these are cross sectional diagram basically. Now, this is the middle one. So, now is here is the gold plated in the in the proof mass here also gold plated in the proof mass. So, in the top also is a gold plating is there in the bottom also gold plating is there. Now, if we 
combine the three pieces. Now, this gold and this gold will be attached together and this gold and this gold will be attached. So, that means, if you make a if this piece is a bottom one is basically the conducting wafer. So, here you make a contact if the conducting means is a highly doping n type silicon wafer if you take it. So, the middle piece contact is taken from here. Okay. Middle piece, piece uh, contact is taken here. Now, if you press this with that, because you see in the in the top wafer the gold line and the middle wafer gold line is molded. So, then this connection is uh, coming up to this, you can take contact from this point. This point is a top electrode contact. Am I correct? This portion you can see. you see this portion here one contact. So, this is if you press here and here join together. So, you join together here. So, this will one contact and that will be top electrode contact. Bottom is this wafer itself. This is a highly conducting wafer. This one wafer is silicon if it is a conducting wafer. So, is a gold is plated here. So, this you can take around contact. So, automatically you are getting contact of this and that means it is not disconnected in a frame somewhere it is connected. So, but this portion and this portion where nitride and oxide is there insulated. Similarly, in the bottom also over insulation the gold is there this gold will help you proper bonding on the bottom and middle wafer. So, then here is an electrode. So, this electrode contact is again this wafer contact can be taken from the bottom piece because in the bottom of this bottom bottom electrode it does not have any insulating layer at the bottom side of the wafer. You have delineated this portion ok, but this side is intact. So, that means, one you can take here, one you can take here and the third you can take either side or from the bottom. That means, a middle is fixed from middle and this will give you the one C 1 ok and similarly, this and this you will give another C 2 this and this will give because this is the common contact you are making. Okay. So, in this way you can you can you can get after the three wafer bonding you can get the complete thing the wafer bonding has been taken place top and bottom now we are joined together you got the three structure. Okay. So, in this way uh, one by one you fabricate separately now, the assembly is another very important point in this particular the capacity accelerator fabrication, where you have to have the both C 1 and C 2 top and bottom capacitance contact should be proper and then you will uh, uh, because you know the, uh, the C 1 C 2 both capacitance structure top and bottom will help you elimination of any any parasitic or some noise pickup because you are you are uh, giving stress on your uh, differential capacitance difference delta c c1 minus c2 that is proportional to g that variation will be with g will be there and that we are interested so in that way because you see here lot of the conducting planes are there and if you use the conducting silicon wafer there is also going to create a problem because the conducting wafer is with any another ground plane it will have some parasitic also and that are the major concern in case of many capacitive accelerometers. So, there we have to see certain design modification certain techniques. So, that those parasitics can be removed completely. Okay. So, this is uh, the the complete process sequence of this capacitive accelerometer structure and I am not going to discuss further on this. And now, we will discuss another uh, the inertial sensor. So, that is the gyro sensor. So, we covered two case studies one is the piezo resistive accelerometer, the second one capacitive accelerometer 
with certain goal and how we designed it and after design how we fabricate also that also we discussed in both the cases. Now, uh, I will give some stress on the another kind of inertial sensor that is the, the, the gyro or rotation sensor and there I uh, would like to give some stress on the quartz, kind, quartz gyro sensor with little introduction of silicon gyro. So, next, next class we will discuss on gyro sensors, MEMS gyro sensors. Thank you very much. A young nation aspiring to find ways to fulfill a dream lays the foundation of an institution that will give aspiring technocrats the license to fly high. The first Indian Institute of Technology is born at Kharagpur. Founded on the basis of the recommendations of the NR Sarkar Committee that was set up in 1945, to consider the development of higher technical institutions in India, the institute was first established in 5 Esplanade East, Kolkata, before it moved to Kharagpur in 1951. With Sir Gyan Chandra Ghosh as the first director and Dr. B.C. Roy as one of its founding guardians, the institute established itself as the symbol of a young, dynamic and resurgent nation. As top students rub shoulders with the most celebrated of professors and scholars, visions took shape. And IIT Kharagpur continued to play the pioneering role that was envisaged for it, enabling India to become a knowledge powerhouse that it is today. At every stage of its evolution, IIT Kharagpur remained ahead of its times. It provided the best of facilities for the budding technologists, helping them shape their own as well as the nation's future. Indeed, today IIT Kharagpur has blossomed into a time-tested, venerable institute of learning. With the rich experience of converting individuals into brilliant professionals through 50 glorious years. As you cross the campus gate, you feel the distinct nip that is IIT Kharagpur. The spirit of objective inquiry and lateral thinking hangs heavy in the air. The modern township-like campus of IIT Kharagpur set in sylvan surroundings is self-sufficient in all respects. From modern banks to the good old post office, from vast playgrounds and well-equipped gyms to modern auditoria and open-air theatres, and from the quiet fibre-optic-linked residential quarters for the faculty to the web-enabled hostel rooms for the students. At IIT Kharagpur, lush green bowers of tranquility coexist with smart cards and ATMs. Spread over 690 hectares of sprawling cyber habitat, 120 kilometers from Kolkata, IIT Kharagpur is one of the largest network campuses in Asia. Just the academic complexes itself spreads over a built-up area of about 2 million square feet, of which 150,000 square feet is the new complex that commemorates the Golden Jubilee celebrations. 
And that's not all. It is the only IIT to have conquered territory beyond its own. Through cutting-edge courses offered in its extension campuses at Kolkata and Bhubaneswar. IIT Kharagpur is not just about its large campus, but its diverse range of activities. It offers the widest spectrum of disciplines, ranging from aerospace, biotechnology, cryogenics, to architecture, mining and agricultural engineering supported by strong faculties of sciences, humanities and management. There are more than 30 departments and centers that offer the largest number of undergraduate and postgraduate courses amongst the IITs. The courses are ever evolving and show the way for other sister institutions. The richness in its diverse activities is showcased by the technological support the institution provides in areas like architecture, agriculture, post-harvest technology and medical sciences. The institute has revolutionized and popularized rice milling technology. The other major contributions of IIT Kharagpur have been in the critical fields of defense, railways, space research, power systems, and petrochemicals. All these activities directly empower the human requirements of the nation. Advanced facilities at the Institute make it possible to undertake cutting-edge research and service-sponsored research projects. The array of equipment ranges from aerodynamic testing laboratories to intelligent machining centers, atomic spectrometers, to VLSI design labs, molecular beam epitaxy, to anechoic chamber, fast protein liquid chromatographs, to liquid nitrogen plants. The cutting-edge technologies are at par with the best research facilities across the globe. In fact, the volume of research and development activities at the Institute is incredible. In terms of the number of patents it owns, the volume of industrial consultancy it provides and the revenue that it earns from all these make IIT Kharagpur a class apart and strengthens its position as the true pioneer in technological education in India. The Institute Library deserves a special mention. Fully web-enabled, it is one of the largest in Asia with over 324,000 volumes of material, including books, videos, microfilm, and patent documents. that ensure a student's mind develops at the right pace. Along with its strong sense of academics, which is ensured by a strict selection process, life at Kharagpur is a celebration of, well, life. And at its heart are the students. In fact, the saying goes that you can take an IITN out of KGP, but not KGP out of an IITN. You've left a part of you behind. For most of the students, life in the campus was in itself a festivity, a collage, 
of activities that shape their mind and body. A collage of events that was a synthesis of competition and cooperation. A collage of interests as diverse as dramatics and ham radio. Yes, life at Kharagpur has always been exciting. And the years cemented lifelong bonds as lives mingled over cups of joy and stretched over stimulating semesters. The halls with their blocks and wings connected by charming catwalks remain ensconced in their own world. A collage of memories. Infrastructurally adequate, architecturally meticulate, and holistically inspiring. Where students, wherever they might be from, invariably come into their own, developing their individual talents, honing their skills to take on challenges with confidence so they can move ahead in fulfilling their dreams. What makes IIT Kharagpur so unique is its environment. Undiluted by the diversions of metropolitan surroundings, the close-knit campus life enhances the entrepreneurial and innovative spirit of the achievers-to-be. In an environment that is so stimulating, it is only natural that down the years, IIT Kharagpur has consistently produced well-rounded individuals. Many of them are celebrities in their own right. Holistic grooming has had a lot to do with this. Indeed, in this golden jubilee year, as the celebration continues, Pandit Nehru would surely have been a proud man today. For him, IIT Kharagpur was always more than just an institute of technology. In his own immortal words, it is indeed a fine monument of modern India.